Malibu Grand Prix is an entertainment company that was popular during the 1970s and 80s as a franchise miniature indie car racing track. Welcome to Eric C Productions. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified of my latest video that are posted during the week. Be sure to hit that like button and leave a suggestion or a comment. You might see that video in a future posting. Thanks for watching and now back to the program. In March of 1975, a group of overgrown kids from Orange County created the first Malibu Grand Prix near Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim. The idea had come about when Ron Cameron, a Malibu investor, was visiting Detroit and came across a miniature speedway where people could drive cars around a dirty track. He took the idea home with him to California, made a few improvements, and started his own business. Initially, the only feature was a miniature racetrack with three-quarter scale, custom-designed 28-horsepower Formula One racers powered by Saks Wankel rotary engines, which allowed anyone to play Mario Andretti for a dollar a lap. The cars, which were valued at twelve to fifteen thousand dollars each, cruised along at speeds of up to sixty-seven miles per hour. The official fastest time for each location was posted on a board outside the track. After three or four months, the location installed a half dozen pinball machines and a handful of video games operated by an outside vendor outside the main building. When the games proved to be an easy source of extra income, the owners tore down some of the offices in the main building to make room for more. When the second location opened up in Fountain Valley, it included a small game room with about 25 games. The third location opened in Pasadena in July of 1976 with 67 games. The owners quickly realized that using an outside vendor to supply their games was costing them money and began operating their own games. While the racetrack remained the focal point of the centers, the video games became almost as well known. By late 1976, the first Malibu Grand Prix outside of California was opened in Tucson, Denver, and Houston. And as the video game explosion got into full swing, Malibu Grand Prix became one of the largest arcade chains in the country. In 1977, Cameron sold the chain to Warner Communications, owner of Atari, for $4 million. Under Warner, the chain soon expanded to over 100 locations nationwide. The Malibu Grand Prix idea eventually spawned imitators such as Funway Freeway, which had locations in 19 states when Warner sold it to Six Flags in 1980. On December 31, 1983, Warner sold Malibu Grand Prix to a holding company controlled by two Canadian businessmen for $19 million, who later merged it with a company called Castle Entertainment. In 1984, the chain lost $6.3 million on revenues of just $28.1 million. In the first quarter of 1985, they lost $2.4 million more. Good evening, friends. Slaughter and butchery are the words being used to describe the murders of four employees of a Southwest Houston amusement center. Their bodies was dis were discovered at a Malibu Grand Prix complex this morning. So far, police have no suspects in what appears to be a case of robbery and multiple murder. Deborah Wrigley reports. The popular racing and video game park became the scene of one of the largest Houston murder investigations in memory just after 8 this morning. That was when a Federal Express delivery man and a female worker arrived here to find the doors to the video game center open. Federal Express employee began to help her look around and they discovered the bodies. How brutal would you describe these murders? Terribly brutal. 
In all, there were four employees dead, all males said to be in their late teens to 20s. They had apparently been closing the center just after midnight when the robbers entered. The business office where one man's body was found was said to have been ransacked. In the bathroom, three more bodies were discovered. All the victims are believed to have died from multiple stab wounds, including slashed throats and stabs to the chest, face, even heads. And under one body, the apparent weapon was found. A recently terminated employee gained entry to the building under the pretext of picking up his last paycheck and brought two accomplices with him. All were convicted, two received the death penalty, and one was sentenced to life in prison. The site was raised in the early 1990s and is now a medical clinic in Gulfton. At its peak in the 1980s, the Malibu Grand Prix Empire encompassed close to 50 tiny racetracks across the United States, Canada, Europe, Asia, and Australia. Hundreds of thousands of racers racked up millions of laps at a buck or so a pop as we chased after the ever better times posted on the electronic timers just beyond the finish line. Devotees with treasured Malibu Grand Prix licenses included not just dweebs like me, but celebrities such as teenage Leonardo DiCaprio, the adult Tupac Shakur, and totally addicted Paul Newman. Although the cars were billed as scaled-down F1 thoroughbreds, they were nothing more than clunky, oversized go-karts with fancy fiberglass bodywork. Notwithstanding the aspirational rear wings and slick tires, the short circuits and serpentine layouts capped top speeds at about 40 measly miles per hour. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel competition was strictly prohibited and drivers had to come to a complete stop and hand over a pre-purchased ticket before starting another lap. The Canadians sold the chain to Mount Asia in 1995. The remaining properties were sold in 1994 and in again in 2002. Since then, virtually all of the Malibu Grand Prix outposts have been shuttered and even at those few locations where the name is still used, the company's original DNA and catch it has long since vanished. In 2002, the last three remaining Malibu Grand Prix were purchased by Palace Entertainment. These locations were in Redwood City, California, Norcross, Georgia, and San Antonio, Texas. Palace operated additional locations in Los Angeles, California, and Dallas, Texas. The Redwood City, California location closed on August 18th, 2013 and the San Antonio location closed on September 7th, 2015. Hey, VS just watched my video. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.